Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today we have a 2020 Kia Sorento and we're going to be showing you how to install the Draw Tight Class 2 trailer hitch receiver. But before we do that, let's kind of check the hitch out and make sure it's something that would work out for you. So with this hitch being a Class 2, it is going to have that smaller inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter receiver tube opening. So I feel like this would be a perfect uh, choice for those of you that already have those uh, smaller accessories like a bike rack for example or really plan on only using a bike rack or smaller accessory um, but on the same note if I was somebody that uh, was wanting to change up my accessories or a lot or uh, do some towing I think I might opt for the class 3 hitch which has a larger 2 inch by 2 inch opening and those are just um, a little more versatile in terms of what you can put in, in them and how much weight they can pull and everything else. So um, as I said, if you already have those accessories uh, with that smaller receiver tube, this is probably the way to go. This hitch is gonna have a reinforced collar for extra strength and it's gonna have that standard half inch size pinhole. Now keep in mind a pin and clip does not come included but if you need one, you can grab it here at e-trailer. We're gonna have loop style safety chain openings which are nice and thick and relatively large actually. So you should be able to use just about any size hook that you might have. As far as hitch's weight capacities go, it's gonna have a 350 pound maximum gross tongue weight rating. And that's gonna be the amount of weight that's pushing down on the hitch. So that's good for those one to three, uh, maybe even four bike racks, for example. Uh, as far as the maximum gross trailer weight rating goes, that's going to be 3,500 pounds, and that's going to be the amount of weight that's pulling on the hitch. So that is the weight of your trailer plus anything that you might have on it. Do you always like to suggest so? Never a bad idea just to grab your Kia's owner's manual. That way you can make sure your SUV can pull that much weight safely. I'm going to give you a couple of measurements, and you can use these to help figure out which hitch mounted accessories to get. From the ground to the top inside edge of the receiver tube opening, that's going to be about 13 and a half inches. So if you do plan on doing some light duty towing, chances are pretty good you're gonna to need to get a ball mount with a rise. From the center of the hitch pin hole to the edge of our rear bumper, that's gonna be about five inches. And you can use that measurement to figure out that if any folding accessories you might have can be stored in that upright position without contacting the bumper. So at the end of the day, a hitch that's gonna get the job done and uh, really help you carry around all those uh, types of accessories. Now, as far as the installation goes, Really not too bad. Uh, don't have to do anything crazy really. Uh, you do have to trim a small panel up a little bit so it can go back in place. Um, but as I said, you really don't have to modify anything. You know, your spare tire goes back up once the hitch is there and uh, everything's pretty straightforward. So really shouldn't give you a whole lot of issues. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and put it on together now. Let's begin our installation. We're gonna be here at the back of our Sereno and first thing we need to do is uh, temporarily remove our spare tires. So you can open up your hatch, come here to your cargo area. Right there, we're gonna have a cap. You can just take a flathead and remove. And that'll expose a uh, nut underneath. And you can either just use a socket and a wrench or your spare tire tools, which are all located here. We're just going to loosen that up until our spare tire drops all the way down to where we can remove it from our vehicle. At this point, we need to lower our exhaust some to give us more room to work. Uh, before we do that, what I like to do is take a strap and just kind of run it from side to side. That way we can kind of not only support our exhaust, but kind of control how far and how fast we let it down. So I'll just snug it up there. If you don't have a strap laying around the house, uh, you can always grab one right here at e-trailer. So to actually lower our exhaust, we're going to have three rubber isolator hangers, similar to this one here. And what you're going to do to get them off is spray them down with some soapy water, some penetrating oil, something like that. You're just going to take a pry bar and work that rubber portion off of the metal hanger. So we have one right there and one kind of tucked up on this corner of our muffler. Uh -huh. 
The third one is gonna be here in the center of our vehicle. So do that same thing. That pried off. And we can loosen up our strap a little bit and lower our exhaust. On the driver's side of our vehicle, uh, we're gonna have this plastic underbody panel. We need to get that out of the way for now. So that's gonna be held in place here at the bottom edge with two push pin fasteners. You can grab a trim tool or a flathead screwdriver. I'm just gonna pry underneath them and pull them out. And then if we look up where it kind of goes to the bottom of our vehicle, we're gonna have some plastic nuts there. And so I just like to take a long extension, use my hand, put on a 14 millimeter socket and just kind of lightly unthread these. Sometimes you have to kind of put a little downward pressure on that panel when you're doing this. So you don't always want to catch. And that's normal. But once we have this free, we can just set it to the side for now. Now what we can do is kind of go over our attachment points and the hardware that we're going to use to secure them. So over on the driver's side, we're going to have four attachment points. We're going to have these two holes in the side of our frame and these two well nuts in the bottom of our frame. Now with these well nuts, what you want to do is spray some penetrating oil or something in there. You take a brush, kind of clean out the threads. Not a bad idea either to grab the hardware, which will be this bolt and a conical tooth washer and just kind of thread it in there. Make sure that uh, there's no obstructions or anything. It goes in nice and smooth. So this is the hardware combination you're going to use for all of the holes on the bottom of the frame rail. And then as far as the holes go on the side of the frame rail, uh, here on the driver's side, you're going to be using these bolts, the conical tooth washer. And once you slide this through on the other side, you're going to take another conical tooth washer. You want it to where the teeth are going to face the hitch in the frame. So have the teeth on the washer like so. And then you're just gonna follow that up with a hux nut. And so this hardware combination is gonna be used for both of these. Something I do wanna point out on each side of our vehicle here on the inside of our frame rail, we have these plastic bumper locator pins. They're kinda in the way there. And so to avoid any um, interference, what I'm gonna do is just trim these. They're just plastic, so you can kinda break them off with your finger use a grinder. Uh, I'm just gonna take a pair of snips here and cut them that way. If they're not in the way, we don't have to worry about them. Over here on the passenger side, we're gonna have three attachment points. So I have the two holes here in the bottom of our frame rail. And this time, all we're going to use is this hole right here in the side of our frame rail. And the hardware that you're gonna use is this bolt. You're gonna put on a flat washer and once our hitch is up, you're going to run it through this way. On the other side of that bolt, once it's through the frame and everything, you're going to take another conical tooth washer, slide that over. And once you put on the flat washer, you're going to slide the bolt in through this way. And once you're through the frame and everything, you can take another conical tooth washer, put it on there, and again, followed by a hex nut. Now with an extra set of hands, we can take our hitch raise it into position and we can take that hardware that we talked about and get our hitch lined up and I'm going to take the bolts here on the side and just push them through that way it'll kind of support the hitch and on the other side we can take our conical tooth washer and our nut and we just want to get everything started hand tight for now So now at this point, we can take all of our hardware that goes here in the bottom and get that going. And then once we have everything in place and hand tight, we can come back and snug it all down. So these bottom bolts, I'm going to use an 11 16 And for the side bolts, 
going to take a 19 millimeter on one side and hold the other side with the wrench and tighten them up. Now we can come back with a torque wrench and tighten down all of our hardware to the amount specified in our instructions. At this point we can rehang our exhaust, so this time we'll just lift it up. Starting with this corner, I found it to be a little easier. Spray them down with some soap and water, penetrating oil, and just slide those hangers back. Uh, and it's position there. Put this one on, and this last one here in the center. And once the exhaust is supporting itself, go ahead and remove our strap. So now our underbody panel, if you try to put it back in place, it kind of interferes a little bit, makes it really difficult to get back up. So what I'm gonna do is just trim out a little bit of this section here. Uh, to make it easier. Since this is plastic, I'm just gonna use a pair of snips and just get this material removed. That way it'll fit up a lot nicer and look better. So now that we had our panel trimmed out, we can go ahead and just push that back into position and re-secure it the opposite way that you removed it. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Draw Tight Class 2 trailer hitch receiver on our 2020 Kia Sorento.